blessed song that is uh, for us to get started on today. Uh, we're so thankful for each and every one of you that have shared um, uh, the link and uh, have joined us in this time of fellowship in our fourth Sunday service. What a blessing it is. Uh, gracious day. Uh, while it's raining outside, the sun is truly shining and we give God thanks and praise for all of his mercy and grace today. Let us then prepare ourselves for our invocation and our mission and vision statement as Reverend Warthun's Reverend Warthun leads us in that uh, at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we 
Thank you for this day where we gather virtually to worship you. A day in times more so than ever before, which may be considered a luxury. Uh, where there are so many souls here in this country as well as around the world that are no longer among the living to utter praises unto you. Uh, Father, society has caused us to believe that luxury is rare, expensive, exclusive, everything that seems unattainable. Now in this period of pandemic, we realize that luxury are those little things that we did not know how to value when we had them. And now they are fleeting. We miss them so very much. Luxury is being healthy. Luxury is not stepping into a hospital. Luxury is being able to walk along the seashore. Luxury is going out on the streets and breathing without a mask. Luxury is meeting your whole family with your friends. Luxury are smiles, hugs, and kisses. Luxury is enjoying every sunrise. Luxury is the privilege of loving and being alive. A luxury is being able to physically gather together in your house of worship and to do so in spirit and truth. All this is a luxury we did not know. So Father, in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, bless this worship experience today that we may truly know the blessed luxuries of life and being in your presence at this hour. This I pray, amen. Amen, amen. And our mission and vision statement. Reverend Wathan, take us through our mission and vision statement. Okay. Reverend Wathan. I'm here. Yeah. The mission, the mission yeah. to live God's word, to spread the gospel of Jesus gospel Christ, Christ, to, all Christ people, to all people, and to provide a wealthy place, place to make new disciples. And our vision. Reaching out to the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, brother. And uh, we are so thankful as we uh, uh, come to, to share to, together today. We uh, had a wonderful um, uh, quarterly church meeting for our third quarter for this particular year. And it is uh, a blessing that we can come together and see how the Lord is blessing and working in and through us as a church body uh, to continue to make sure that the gospel is going out to all people. We're thankful right now for an opportunity uh, as we had this morning uh, for our Sunday school. Uh, Sister Tyra Garlington taught our Sunday school uh, this morning and we're so thankful for uh, her sharing in that passage of scripture from Exodus uh, 24. Uh, we are doing uh, a series in the, in, in the book of the Exodus we had a wonderful time and a time of discussion. I want to encourage everyone to, to join in with our Sunday school at nine o'clock every Sunday morning. Uh, we do have for younger people also, and um, that is a different link, but we are would be glad for you to be there. Wednesday, we're studying in the book of Esther, and uh, what a blessed time we're having as our teachers are sharing with us, uh, Deacon Nelson and, De uh, and, and uh, Trustee Bodie, we are having a wonderful time in there. And on Thursday night, the book of James, where we're in the fourth chapter right now, what a blessed study we've been having in the book of James. It is truly wonderful. We ask and pray that each of you if you would avail yourselves of joining in with us on Wednesday noonday, Sunday morning, and Thursday evening for our Bible study series. Now, this month is um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, 
And uh, we've asked people last week and asked them today that they wear something pink uh, to, in order that we might uh, uh, acknowledge uh, this day of breast cancer awareness. And I um, understand that um, Deaconess uh, Many Lipsy is going to have a word to say about our, our time uh, with um, uh, observance of the breast cancer awareness. So I would like to yield to her to have uh, whatever she would like to share uh, about our breast cancer awareness day. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Deaconess Brooks was assigned that task, Pastor. Okay. So Deaconess Brooks. Is she unmuted? Sister Fenta has that control. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Breast cancer is when malignant abnormal cells are found in breast tissue. When found early, it may be curable. Except for skin cancer, breast cancer is the most common cancer of women between the age of 40 to 59 years of age. And it's the leading, leading cause of deaths in America. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. Although very rare, one in 1,000 men can develop breast cancer. Many factors can influence breast cancer risk. And most women who develop breast cancer do not have any known risk factors or a history of the disease in their families. However, you can help lower your risk of breast cancer in doing the following things. Keep a healthy weight, exercise regularly, avoid exposure to chemicals that cause cancer, try to reduce exposure to radiation during medical exams like mammograms, x-rays, CT scans. Breast cancer awareness is more than just wearing the pink ribbon. It's also knowing your risk factors. Is your family history? It's getting monography, mammograms, screenings as recommended by your doctor. It's doing monthly self-exams and knowing what is normal for you. It's making healthy lifestyle ch choices that can help reduce your risk. And it's about encouraging the women in your family as well as your sisters in spirit to do all of the above. Over the years, Chantilly Baptist Church has lost several members due to breast cancer but we have also been blessed with a number of survivors. I encourage <clears throat> excuse me, each of you to do what you can do to increase the survival rate by financially supporting not only <clears throat> excuse me, organizations that are doing research, but those that provide free low cost screenings for women in need and support to women who are surviving with this disease. If you would check out our um, website, cbc.org, you will see that the Wellness Committee has put a host of information out there on breast cancer awareness for this month. It's a lot of information, a lot of links for, your, um, for you to check out. And I'll leave you with this scripture, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, uh, Deaconess Dora Brooks. We are so thankful for uh, that information, and we certainly want to point you to, as she said, our website, where you can get a lot more information and links to even more information. So uh, we're thankful for our Deaconesses for uh, being active and engaged in that arena. Uh, we're thankful for the opportunity to, um, to be able to share. Let me uh, also remind you that we're having our um, Thanksgiving Eve service uh, uh, again this year. Of course, it will be virtual. It will be a joint service uh, 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 between five different churches, but the site uh, church that uh, we will 
um, uh, be hosting the uh, virtual uh, joint service uh, will be King of Kings Lutheran Church down 50 near um, uh, Fairfax County Parkway. We're looking for people to join in and to be with us on November 25th at seven o'clock um, p.m. Uh, for that. We'll have a virtual choir singing also during that service. Um, I want to, um, well, I want to remind people that if you are interested in going to the Bible Land Exploration Tour of Israel, which was originally scheduled for um, uh, later next month, it has been moved to next year uh, on November 29th. So if you're interested and in wanting to go and get involved, please uh, let us know. Uh, we will um, be able to get out a brochure to you describing the tour and uh, what you need to do in order to uh, get involved and to share. All right, so we're looking forward to that. I want to uh, back up now and say, we're so thankful for each and every one of you continuing to give for the Lord is continuing to bless. Uh, we are able to do all the things that the Lord has called for us to do because of the faithfulness of the saints and a special shout out to all of those that are virtual members who are sending in uh, offerings uh, from uh, various places around the nation. We're thankful to you for all that you are doing to help us to continue uh, to minister. We can uh, receive those uh, by uh, mailing. Uh, to our post office box in Chantilly, Virginia, post office box 220175 uh, in, in Chantilly, uh, 20153, or on our website at chantillybaptist.org, there's an e-giving link, or just drop it by the church. Uh, we are so thankful for your giving. And I want to ask if uh, Deacon Green would now give uh, a, a prayer. Uh, for those that are giving and those who want to give and cannot give. We ask and pray for you also. Deacon Green. Thank you. Let us all go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we give you thanks, Lord, for all that you continue to do for us. But right now, we're going to just focus on the financial giving, Lord. You've given us jobs, Lord. You've given us health to work, retirement. You've given us all sort of benefits. But whatever it is, Lord, we look to you and say thank you for being that provider. So right now, Lord, as we give back a portion of what you've given us, let us give with love, with joy, with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord, knowing that whatever we give is going to touch somebody somewhere in Chantilly or somewhere in the community or somewhere in the world, Lord, as little as it might be, we know, Lord, it comes from you. So we say thank you once again. Continue to bless us, Lord. And we are committed to continue to praise you and give back a portion of what you've been giving to us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Deacon Green, for that fervent prayer. Uh, we want to enter now into our meditation and altar call time as we come to share and uh, uh, Reverend Edwards is going to share with us as we prepare our hearts to go before the Lord in prayer and allow him to touch us in a special way as we prepare for uh, our time of worship together. So Reverend Edwards, would you please take us to the throne of grace? Good morning, Chantilly Baptist. Let us bow our heads. Dear most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this is the day you have made and we will rejoice in it. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to allow us to come together online as one body in Christ, praising and lifting your holy name. Lord, we pray to continue to live by faith and not by sight. Therefore, even if we don't see things happening right now, you are always 
behind the scene, scripting and coordinating the outcomes. Lord, you said in your word in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, yes. plans to prosper you and not to harm, mm. plans to give you hope and a future. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the rough waters of life. And when times are unpleasant, that you will never leave nor forsake us and that we can continue and cast our cares upon you because you love us so much. Yes, Lord. And because you love us so much, we will trust you and stand on your promises for a better today and tomorrow. Lord, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your unwavering love, forgiveness, and the many blessings you continue to bestow upon us. Lord, we thank you most of all for your son who is advocating for us day after day. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we pray over the impact of COVID mm. and how it continues to affect our lives daily. We pray for a cure and an end to the suffering from it. Lord, we, we continue to pray over the racial injustices, the politics, yes. and the healing in our nation. Lord, give us the strength to spread the good news of the gospel to all people every day, everywhere. Mm. Lord, we, we pray over those going through hardships of life, medical issues, high yes. unemployment, financial needs, job-related yes. needs, family issues, the homeless, and people suffering from the government not providing resources that are so needed right now. Mm. Lord, one thing we know for sure is that you are almighty, yes, all powerful, are. all knowing, and in control of every situation and outcome. Yes, Therefore, we will continue to seek your will, guidance, and strength to overcome whatever the enemy continues to throw at us. Lord, mm. we pray for the sick and shut in in our church and for your divine healing over them. Lord, we pray over the Breast Cancer Month and those who have been affected by breast cancer. Mm. Lord, we, we pray for others who are sick and shunning this morning. Yes. Lord, we pray for those bereaved families and that you comfort them in the time of need. Yeah. Lord, we, we, we pray for our pastor as he brings forth the word for your people. Mm. Use him mightily today that someone would decide to give their life back to you. Yes. Last, Lord, we pray for love for one another, respect, and most of all, unity among all your people. Lord, we are reminded to give you all the honor, glory, and praise for what you have done and continue to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God amen. bless. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, Reverend Edwards for uh, that wonderful prayer and uh, certainly it sets our mind uh, ready as we share together further in this time of worship. Let us have uh, Reverend Wathan now to read our scripture for us that will lead us in the um, uh, in, in this portion of our worship and is tied to the wider context of our uh, message this morning uh, from the book of Exodus chapter 8 verses 16 through 32. Reverend Wartham, would you share that scripture with us? And the Lord said unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end of thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron, and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, Shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away, entreat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Thus saith the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much uh, for that uh, reading of the water context of our um, uh, textual passage uh, today. Uh, we want to have now another song, and then we will share the word of God as he has given this morning. chapter of Isaiah, the model of true worship is revealed. We have to acknowledge God as sovereign. We have to accept ourselves as sinners. We have to accept the saving grace of God, and we must call, answer God's call to serve. 
And I heard the word of the prophet say, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple, and hovering about him were six winged seraphims. With two wings, they covered their feet, and with two wings, they covered their eyes, and with two wings, they did fly. And Isaiah said that his spirit shook the foundation of the earth. And so today I challenge you to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Oh, come, let us worship him. Come, let's worship him. Worship him. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let's come. Give him honor. Give him the Worship him with our hands. Come, let us worship him with your feet. Worship him with your body. Worship him with your service. Let the whole earth worship him. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the Yes. Worship him. Give my God the glory. Give my God the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. And Isaiah said, Woe is me. I thought of myself as undone. And then he heard a call. After the fire had purged him, he said, who will go with me? And I heard him say, I'll go. I'll go. Then you can worship him. Then you can worship him. Worship him, yes. Holiness. Give him that praise. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Honor, praise him. Give him the Let us worship the Lord. Amen. What a call today for us to come and worship him in spirit 
and in truth. We are so thankful for a gracious God and a merciful God. That was our male chorus. And uh, we're so thankful for them as they uh, sing uh, to the glory of God every fourth Sunday. Uh, we're so thankful for them and Sister Joyce, who plays for that choir, is the director of that choir also. As we come today, we want to share together um, from uh, a scripture that starts a little bit before uh, the time that uh, was was read uh, by Reverend Morthen and uh, indicate that this is indeed a portion of what we want to share together as we continue to look at the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 8 verses 28 through 29 is our textual passage for today. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. Amen. Well, I want to continue in this uh, kind of mini-series, Rebellion Brings Consequences. And this is part three of that mini-series. So let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to share together in, Lord, your holy word. We ask and pray, Lord, that we not just be hearers, but that we will be doers of your word also, that we will understand that you're a God that changes not, and that you're able today, even as you were then, to deliver uh, from injustice and oppression. We give you praise today and give you thanksgiving in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray, amen and amen. <clears throat> As we come to share together today, uh, I want to uh, 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 use as that subject, a rebellion brings consequences. And this is indeed part three of that series. Now, I just read this scripture to you uh, as, as our textual passage. And as we prepare to look more in depth at this um, uh, subject, you know, I want to remind you that we've been preaching this mini series uh, on Pharaoh's rebellion against God to keep the children of Israel in bondage in Egypt. This has been nestled in the wider context of the book of Exodus to help us to understand the power of our God. His power to deliver from injustice and his power to deliver from oppression. This is as true today as it was in the days of Moses and in the days of the Exodus. We hear in the streets today, no justice, no peace. You know, disobedience to God has consequences. His justice must prevail or there is no peace, says the Lord. We, we started this mini series two weeks ago and started in the context of Moses and Aaron actually delivering the message from God to Moses who was sitting on the throne. We also looked at, Mo, uh, at, at, at Pharaoh's uh, uh, refusal to obey the command of God as given him by Moses and Aaron. God showed 
Pharaoh a series of things to let him know that the God of Israel was the all-powerful and true God. You remember some of the things that the Lord showed uh, uh, Pharaoh as he sat on the throne there in Egypt. You remember Moses' rod, the rod of God, was turned into a serpent when it was laid down before his throne. But he called up his magician, ma magicians and, and, and they laid down their rods and all their rods turned into serpents also. However, Moses' rod swallowed up the rods of the magicians. You know also that Moses stretched out his rod over the waters of Egypt and all the water in Egypt turned into blood for seven days. The Egyptian magicians could not take the blood away. They couldn't turn it back into water. All they could do was make even more blood. Last week, we talked about Moses stretching out his rod and frogs came up. Uh, out of all of the waters of Egypt, and they covered all of the land of Egypt. There were frogs everywhere. And when Pharaoh entreated Moses to ask the Lord to remove the frogs, Moses prayed the next day, and all the frogs died, and they stuck up the entire land. Sin is rotten, and sin is a stinky thing. But when the frogs were gone, Pharaoh hardened his heart and refused to let the Israelites go to worship the Lord. Now the Lord is about to bring another plague upon Egypt. Remember that the Lord is witnessing in several different manners. He's witnessing to Pharaoh. He's witnessing to the Egyptian people. And he's also witnessing his power to the Israelites, his chosen people, to Moses and Aaron. And the Israelites had to go through the plagues uh, also. Up to now, all the plagues that have been placed on Egypt were also experienced by the children of Israel in their land, uh, there in Egypt, in Goshen. Now the Lord brings lice upon the land of Egypt because of the rebellion of Pharaoh. Let's look at another verse here. In, in chapter 18 of Exodus, verse 16 through 17, we see these words written. And the Lord said unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth. And it became lice in men and in beasts all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Wow. But God did something a little different this time. Remember, God is showing his dominance over all of the gods and goddesses and magicians of Egypt. And the magicians tried to bring forth lice. And they also tried to get rid of the lice in the land, but they couldn't do either. Wow. Now, you remember, uh, uh, I, I know you remember the Little Rascals. I used to love to watch that when I was growing up. And you remember the Little Rascals, the time that Alfalfa was, was, was going to try to drive his parents' car. But Spanky said, you know, he said, you can't drive that car. You need license to drive a car. Does anybody have a license? And Buckwheat uh, stood forth and he said, 
I used to have license, but my mammy put coal oil on them and killed them. Now I don't have license anymore. Well, here we're talking about real life here in Egypt. Look at verse 18. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon men, on man, and upon beast. Now the magicians are finally getting the message. They're getting the message as to what they're up against. They told Pharaoh that he needs to stand down. Let's look at how they bring this. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. And Moses and, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. In other words, the magicians were beginning to realize that there were no match for God. They could not overcome the power of God. In other words, the magicians were trying to tell Pharaoh that he better stop messing around with them Jews and leave them alone and go about his business because he can't win this. Therefore, the Lord brought yet another plague on Egypt. But God did something else that was new this time. God would show Pharaoh that he is not only the God that is in control uh, uh, of, of, of what happens, but he's in control of who it happens to. His wrath could be limited to only those that he was targeting. Let's look at how that comes about in, in Exodus chapter eight, verse 20 through 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, thus saith the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Else, if thou will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee and upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thy houses and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end Thou mayest know that I am the God, that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. A amen. This is really serious as we see uh, that the Lord is now doing something little different to let Pharaoh know that he's the God overall and that he can bring his wrath on whosoever he will. Here God will bring flies upon all Egypt except the land of Goshen where the Israelites dwell. They had shoe fly pie in Goshen there was a no-fly zone in Goshen. You see, it is instructive for us to look at what this, this plague actually was because it, it may not be so obvious when you look at it casually. If you look carefully at, at most translation, especially in the King James Version, you will see that when it says swarms of flies, that the of flies is actually in italics. So there is not a good transliteration for what was going on when that was written. It, it's, it, it just says swarms, okay? But for clarity, the translators said, so swarms of flies was inserted can be more accurately described as swarms of flying insects 
or a mixture of noisome insects or beasts. Most scholars would indicate that these swarms were various insects, not just one kind, that were not just nuisances, but that they were also biting insects. So it was a real pestilence. That, 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 that there were, 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 were a preponderance of flies in that time is not difficult to imagine given what had gone on prior to this, right? You remember all the water in the Nile and all of the tributaries and all the ponds and all the lakes turned into blood for seven days. Then there were piles and piles of dead frogs all over the land. They were fermenting and, 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 and decaying in the sun. Then after that, the Lord brought lice all over everything and everywhere. There was plenty of insects to breed on. There were plenty of things to breed flies. Blow flies were blowing everything. You know, green flies. I you have them big green flies down, down in Mississippi, you know, but, but the miracle was that there were no swarms in Goshen, only in Egypt. The Israelites were spared this, uh, 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 this, this situation. So Goshen indeed was a no-fly zone. So what, what I'm attempting to point out here is this entire interaction with Moses, between Moses and Pharaoh and the Almighty God is that Pharaoh begins to do a series of pivots at this time uh, that can only be called compromises. Pharaoh doesn't want to obey. He wants to compromise. But he had to learn that Jehovah God is not a God of compromise. You either obey him or you accept the consequences for your rebellion. And that brings me to uh, four short points that I'd like for you to learn from the, this series of compromises that Pharaoh tries to institute and engage in with God. And, and the first one that I'd like you to realize is that the first compromise is the don't go compromise. The don't go compromise. Look at what it says in, in chapter 8, verse 25. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, go ye, sacrifice to the Lord, to, the, to your God in the land. Let, let me read that in the, uh, uh, the New Living Translation. It, it, it makes it a little bit uh, uh, clearer. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. All right. Go ahead, offer sacrifices to your God, he said, but do it here in this land. I ain't letting you go out. I'm not letting you go into the wilderness. You do it right here. You know, Pharaoh told Moses that he could have his worship service, but he had to stay within the land of Egypt. Pharaoh would allow the Israelites to worship, but they had to worship inside of Egypt. You know, Satan often offers this kind of compromise to us today. You can worship as long as you don't look like you're worshiping. You can stay at home. You can worship watching the TV. You can Listen to it on the radio. You can uh, stay at home and, 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 and get on the internet and, and hear something, but, but I don't want you to get too involved in this worship thing. Often we will say a blessing over our food when we go out to eat, but we don't want anyone else to know that we are actually asking the Lord to bless our food. You know how we do when we're around the table, in, you know, in a, in a public place. We kind of do the quick head dip, you know, look, quick head dip, 
and 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 all of a sudden, you know, we said, like, yeah, bless the food, bless the food. That's it. That's all, you know. But believers are called to a very different walk in this life and in this world. You know, uh, uh, John says it this way in John 15, 18 to 20. Uh, he said, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. This is what Jesus is saying. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. You know, there's, there's something else that we need to know. In John 17, that great prayer of our Lord there in the upper room when he prayed uh, with and for his disciples, he said, I've given them thy word and the world had hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil or the evil one, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Can you hear the Lord praying for you in the upper room? Because he was not just praying for them, but he said, I'm praying for those that will believe uh, on me by their word as they go forth. You know, we're called to look for deliverance from the evil of this world. And Paul told the Galatian church uh, uh, in Galatians 1, 4, uh, uh, 4 through 5, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever Amen. Praise God. You know, Moses rejected this evil compromise uh, from Pharaoh. And, and he said, we will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. You know, what Moses is saying is, we're going to do exactly what the Lord has called for us to do. And we're not going to compromise with you in this day. You know what else that we need to understand? That there's another kind of compromise that Moses, that Pharaoh tried to bring forth. It was not only the don't go compromise, but there is the don't go very far compromise. You can go, but don't go very far. Look at what it says in verse 28. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far away. So entreat for me. In other words, uh, go, 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 go tell the Lord that. Uh, he, he ought to be able to accept that. That should be good enough. You know, uh, the fact is, Pharaoh was getting blown by all of those insects and getting bitten all over the place and he needed some relief so he was trying to give a little bit he was trying to move in a little bit in, in the right direction he told Moses that he could go and he could worship he and Aaron as long as they didn't take the worship too far he couldn't let them go do the real thing but they had to fake it you know, Pharaoh was not willing to let the Israelites go, but he was only lengthening the chain of oppression. You see, Satan wants us not to take worship too far. A amen. When you're really going to say amen, when you're really going to uh, 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 sing and shout, when you're really going to raise up holy hands, when you're really going to respond to the truth of the word of God. Satan doesn't want you to do that. If you can just, don't take it too far. You know, don't, don't go off the deep end. Don't, don't carry a religion 
too far. Don't, don't take the gospel outside of the sanctuary. You can do as much of the gospel as you want, but don't go out there in the highways and byways and tell anybody about the good news of, of, the, of, of, the, of the glory of God. But God calls for complete commitment to do his will, but the world wants to keep God's will bound up. You know, that's why uh, Paul said to the church at Rome, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your very bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or reasonable worship. And be not conformed to this world, but ye be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what the Lord said uh, through Paul to the church at Rome. Moses gave Pharaoh a warning that he should not be deceitful anymore in his promise to let the children of Israel go. But you know Pharaoh, he's going to push the envelope and he reneged again on what the Lord had called for him to do. So Moses had to deliver this message from the Lord. In Exodus 8, verse 29 through 32, and Moses said, behold, I go out from you and I will entreat the Lord that the swarm of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants and from his people tomorrow. You know, Pharaoh had this thing about tomorrow. He didn't want the Lord to do it right now. He wanted to have just one more night with them flies blowing all over him. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the world, to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants and from his people. There remained not one. Remember, there were none in Goshen anyway. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Really, Pharaoh, are you that hard-headed? Yes, he is. And that's why I bring up my next point. He not only had the compromise of the don't go, but he had and had the don't go very far compromise. But now he's about to have another compromise. That compromise, go, but leave your families here. You can go, but leave your families here. Let's look at what he says in chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. And he said unto them, let the Lord be, uh, be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones. Look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now, ye that are men, and serve the Lord, for that ye did desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Amen. Look at what Pharaoh is saying. He said, ah, I know the trick. Uh, no, no. You asked for you to go and go out and worship. So you and a few men, you can go out and worship. But I want you to leave all your families, all your kids. I want you to leave them all here because I see a trick in, in, in the making. I'm not going to follow that. You see, the Lord at this point had inflicted the land of Egypt with several more plagues. But Pharaoh would not let the people go. God struck all the cattle of Egypt with a disease, possibly anthrax, that they all died at his command, but did not kill a single cow in Goshen, where the Israelites lived. Not a single calf was harmed in Goshen. We're talking about God striking down all of the gods of Egypt, and one of their major gods was Apis the bull, amen, or Apis the calf. We see 
that this was what the Lord was striking out against and tearing down the entire false worship system of Egypt. Let's look at a little bit further. You know, back in nine, verse, verse six, and the Lord did that thing on the morrow and all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Not one cow, not one calf, not one bull, right? Then the Egyptians were struck with a plague of boils, except for the children of Israel in the land where they dwelt. Let's look at what it says in 10. And they took ashes from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it up toward the heaven and it became a boil breaking forth with blains over man and upon beast. They were tormented by these boils and on the beast also. God caused then a flaming hail to rain down on Egypt that it destroyed all of the right crops, but not in Goshen, not among God's people. Let's look at this scripture. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven and the Lord sent thunder and hail and the fire ran along upon the ground. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And you know, Israel had been in existence and had been a nation for quite a while. <clears throat> Pharaoh now begins another series of compromises and said that only the men could go and worship God in the wilderness. But Moses refused that compromise. Moses warned Pharaoh that, that the Lord would bring locusts throughout the land of Egypt, but not in Goshen. But Pharaoh hardened his heart still. Man, I tell you, what is it gonna take for this guy to learn? But, and Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them, there were no such locusts as they neither after them shall be such. In other words, there was not this many locusts before, nor has there ever been since. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened and they did eat every herb of the, of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field through all the land of Egypt. What devastation was that? But Pharaoh still hardened his heart and refused to let the people go. After Moses prayed that the Lord would remove the locusts, you know, uh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh's like Satan is today. Satan wants us to compromise. By, by letting us worship, but he wants us to leave our families at home. Don't bring your children. Don't teach them the word of God. Don't let them get engaged in, in, in studying the word. Don't let them uh, come and learn about the true and living God. The Lord has commanded that we worship with our families. We ought to worship in spirit and in truth, and we need to share that with all of our households. You remember uh, in Joshua, what Joshua said in the closing chapters of, 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 of that book, he says, now if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods which, uh, which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. And you know what? Deuteronomy uh, uh, says it this way. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt do what? Teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. You need to be teaching your family. You need to be engaged in God's word. You need to understand, get them to understand. You've got to be a witness to your family as well as those in and around you. You've got to share the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a shame if we don't uh, be the primary uh, conduit by which our children are saved. We need to lead them to our Lord and Savior to confess him and receive them into our lives. He can keep them for all eternity. We're only going to have them for a little while. But if they're born again, then we will be with them for all eternity. What a consolation. What a, a, a revelation. What a, a wonderful thing to know that your children, your entire family knows the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior. Satan doesn't want you to lead your family into worship, but that is a lie from the pits of hell, and we want to do what the Lord has called for us to do. But you know what else? There's another compromise that, say, that Satan wants to lay on us and one that Pharaoh tried to lay on Moses and Aaron. Amen? Here's what he said. You know, not only the don't go compromise, not only the don't go very far compromise, not only the don't, you know, go but leave your family here compromise. The last one is go but leave your stuff here. You can go. Believe everything you have here. You know, that's another compromise. Let's see how Pharaoh spun this one up. You know, in Exodus 10, verse 24 through 25, it says, and Pharaoh calling to Moses and said, go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Amen. Pharaoh is just like Satan today. It's all right if you worship the Lord, even with your families. But don't bring an offering. Don't come and give him the first fruit. Don't bring your tithes. Don't bring what the portion of that which the Lord has blessed you with. You know, the, the, the Lord had to take Pharaoh through a couple more uh, uh, plagues before he would let the people go. The next plague was darkness over all Egypt. But guess what? There was no darkness in Goshen. There was supernatural light in the houses of the Israelites in the places where they lived, in their dwelling places. Let's look at how uh, uh, this, this, this goes. And, 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 and uh, as we look at this particular passage, and the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, over even darkness, which may be felt. Have you ever been in a, a, a place where it was so dark, you could feel the darkness? We've been down in, in caverns and they turned out all the lights. And I tell you, the darkness was so pervasive that you could almost cut it with a knife. That was the darkness that was in Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. 
they saw not one another. You know, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Neither rose any from his place for three days. It was so dark, they didn't even try to walk during that time. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Amen. They had light in their dwellings. So then, this is a supernatural darkness that the Lord placed on Egypt. This was darkness that you can feel, but the children of Israel were the children of light. You know, First John says it this way. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. You know, when you're in the Lord, when you're in the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are, uh, you know, under God's power, you're not in darkness. You are in the light. And, 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 and Satan has offered all of us the compromise of, of worshiping the Lord, but not with our, 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 our substance. And, and, and God wants uh, us to give as he has given to us. Satan does not want God to be offered our possessions. He wants us to feel that it belongs to us. To belong, it belongs to you. It's yours. You work for it. You earned it. You have it. You've got it in your bank account. You've got it under your mattress. You've got it in your purse. You've got it in your wallet. And, and that you can feel free to keep it to yourself. But Moses did not fall for this compromise. He even reminded God's people when he wrote Psalm 90. You remember the Psalm of Moses that was written in Psalm 90? It says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth, and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Amen? Compromise. Compromise keeps us in bondage. True consecration, true sanctification in our lives allows us to have no compromise with the world, no compromise with Satan, no compromise with his evil ways. We must allow Christ to be the Lord of all of our lives. We must give him everything. We must yield ourselves to him and surrender all. If he is not Lord of all of our lives, then he's not Lord at all in our lives. We've got to have him in every corner of our existence. We need to seek his faith and seek his guidance and have him to lead us and have him to guide us and be our light as we move in this world. You know, and I say that if you have never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you're still in darkness. But God wants you to come out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, uh, in the book of Peter, First uh, Peter, we see this written, but ye are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, right? You're a chosen generation, you know, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we give an invitation right now for you to move out of darkness and into his marvelous light. We serve a mighty God. We serve a delivering God. We serve a God that's able to lift you up from oppression. We serve a God that's able to make you free in this world. We serve a God that is light to your pathway and a lamp unto your feet. We serve a God that is able to save to the uttermost. And he is doing that today. And he is calling someone today to come to him. He says, behold, I stand at the door 
and I knock. If anyone open up the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Are you there today? Are you understanding and feeling the Holy Spirit of God touching your heart, asking you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And if you're there and the Lord is calling on your heart, just pray a simple prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. I need your salvation. I want your light in my life. Please come into my life, into my life and be my Savior henceforth and forevermore. Give me your eternal life. And Lord, I thank you right now because if you pray such a prayer, then the Lord will come in and change your whole life and bring light into your pathway. We serve a mighty God, a mighty gracious God, a mighty powerful God, and we serve a God that can be your God right now. He's able. And we're thankful today for all that have been on this Zoom session. We ask and pray that if you pray the prayer of salvation, that you just enter that into the chat box. Let us know who you are and give us some way that we might be able to contact you so we can help you to grow in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter where you are, but we know that the Lord is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything that you can possibly ask or think. Amen. We're so blessed today for each and every one of you. We ask and pray the Lord's blessings upon you and upon your families and upon your walk with the Lord so that he can lighten your pathway. He is able to do exceeding abundantly. We're so thankful for all of those that helped us today to bring forth this time of, of our Zoom presentation. We're thankful for our, our AV team, especially Jacinta Franklin, who was operating uh, uh, the songs and, and things for us. We praise God for each and every one of you. May the Lord bless you mightily on this day. Amen. We're in the parking lot. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to say a prayer of benediction as we prepare to go down from this place of worship as we might share together. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these lessons today, Lord, on compromise and how we should be out of compromise in this day. We want to uh, allow you to have control and to share with us, Lord, those things that you would have us to do. We ask and pray that you will bless that one that may have accepted you as Lord and Savior, even on this day. We ask and pray right now that you will touch their hearts. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now, henceforth and forever. Let us all pray together. Amen. Amen. Amen.